G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this is a video tutorial in which we're going to be taking an almost finished picture and adding a lot of refinement and uh, editing colours and shading and lighting to really make it pop and you know the finishing touches that are always really fun to do. Now if you want to check out the rest of the pieces of the tutorials that made this picture a picture, click the annotation on the left uh, where you'll be taken to the index where you can check the other pieces of that out or there's a link in the description. Uh, or if you'd rather watch the whole thing be painted uh, in a speed paint, in a matter of a couple of minutes, you can click the annotation on the right to view the finished product or the link in the descri description. So this is what we've got to work with so far, an almost finished image. Okay. Now when I say almost finished, most of the basic elements are there. I've got the textures, I've got the basic shading and lighting done, I've got the, most of the rough details in that I wanted to work with. So what I'm going to be doing is making it pop out a bit more. So the first thing I like to do when really making an image pop, especially with a figure like this, is work with shadow. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call it lighting. And inside that I'm going to make a new layer and with a black brush, with a full opacity, full hardness and a fairly smallish size. I'm going to outline the boundaries of shadow and uh, fill that in. And I'm going to draw it with the opacity of the, of the layer itself on 50% so I can see behind it. So I just finished the shadow outline of how I want the shadow to be laid out. Um, now this is not the way it looks in the final uh, piece. I just wanted to have a nice uh, solid glimpse of you know how the shadow folds around him, and a lot of it is kind of uh, about kind of instinct and feel when you get used to working with shapes. So I didn't want to uh, spend any of the time talking about how I was going about or deciding to do the shadow. But when you've done your basic shadows, and it could just be simple, this is more of a complicated one because there's back lighting and then uh, you know a little bit of front lighting too. But when you've got that in place, bring the opacity really way down to something like 15%. And already that makes it pop. Now there's a few quick changes I want to add to the skin. I just want to add a little bit more shading. So in going into my shading uh, if I hide the shadow bit that I just did and then go into my skin, the layer which has the more uh, refined darker shading, I want to select my dark skin tone, make it even darker and add even more darkness to a couple of places which I think really need to pop out more. So in getting a larger brush with no hardness and really low opacity, I want to really darken the eyes in here. Simple as that. And then the other one. And that just very quickly makes them pop. And there we go. Now that I've finished that, what I've done is I darken the eyes, a few other little nooks and crannies, and under the jaw. So now when I add my shadow layer, the whole image already pops out a bunch more. Okay, so that's the first part of the refinement is adding some uh, shadows. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is doing color editing to the overall image. So to do so, I need to make sure that I have an idea as to what the colors will be. So first thing we're going to do is muck around with a background color. So let's, uh, for example, say I'm going to go with uh, a 
blue like this, or, you know, medium purple blue, it's a terrible blue, here, that, I'm going to do a dark background gradient, like really, really dark. I'm going to select my gradient here so it goes to zero opacity, so it's like this. So I'm going to make my gradient uh, do a few of those so that they kind of layer and I have this black overlaying it. So I'm going to find a color that I think will suit. So blue looks pretty good. I wonder what red looks like. Paste it on that color. So no, I don't like that. It's a bit too harsh. Maybe green. I think it merges too much with his body. Let's try like an off white. No. So I actually think uh, maybe we'll try like a purple. So that's not too bad. I like how the purple mixes with the yellow. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to have this dark, slightly desaturated purple for the background, uh, seeping into the black. Now I'm going to edit this guy's colors uh, to mix with the lighting. So I'm going to have a, a theoretical purple backlight and a light blue room color front light. So to apply uh, what I plan to apply, I want to be able to have a perfect selection of this guy's skin, or no, this guy himself, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna hide everything except for all the layers with him, right click, duplicate layers, and then I'm gonna right click and merge layers. So if I hide everything but that new thing, I have a completely flat image of everything that I've put together so far. Now, I don't actually want to uh, have this for any purpose other than the selection because I can't select otherwise. So I'm going to select the negative area outside of him, then hit select and inverse. And I have a perfect selection of this character. So if I hit paste, oops, sorry. If I fill, you can see that I've got my silhouette. So that being said, I don't need that layer anymore so I can delete it. I'll bring back my other layers and with my selection still there, I'm going to bring this new layer into the lighting folder and I'm going to start adding my lighting. So I'm going to make the background visible and I'm going to have my purple pink lighting around the edges of this guy to show that that's what the backlight is doing. So I'm going to select my brush and again, keeping the selection that we've just made uh, there, we're going to be adding our changes because that way if I paint, just as with a, like a clipping mask, I can't paint outside where I'm selected. So I'm just going to go around and add this pinkish color that I just selected. Do it around all the edges, backed on to the background. Now I think that's not very manly, it's a bit too pink. So I'm going to make it a bit more of a almost blue purple. And I'll bring it, uh, I'll make it almost blue. Yeah, about there. And I'm bring, going to bring up the opacity and I'm going to do my edges. There we go. So now it's not going to look pretty. I just want to get them kind of in there. And I'll show you what we do in a moment to make it actually work. Now we'll test it out. I'm going to select this layer and muck around I'm going to muck around with these layer settings. So I'm going to find one that I think brightens things well. So let's see. Mm, nothing too great so far. Overlay is not too bad. I might work with overlay. I'm going to bring the opacity down and then continue my painting around the edges. So again, this is just to kind of help meld the picture I've done with the world I'm putting him in. So I want to make sure I'm doing a bit of light reflected on things like the creases of the clothes, on the edges of his nose and eyebrows, anything that's remotely facing where the backlight might be. So I'm just doing these really light sort of brisk strokes. very quickly we've got our rim lighting done. So I don't really want to add too much more to that 
because I think it's quite a strong rim light anyway. And in fact, I'll bring the opacity down even more. And now I'm going to be doing my front lighting. So on a new layer, I'm going to bring my brush up more because this is a much more uh, loud sort of light. I'm going to go nice light blue and bring down the opacity. And just to test it out, I'm going to paint the front facing areas of the face like this. And I'm going to go through my light settings and I'll find what mixes well. And I like, that's not bad, soft light's quite good. So if you can see when I hide that and bring it back again, you can see the difference it makes. It's not a huge difference, but it just kind of shows that there's a cool room light. So I'm gonna add that to the front sections of the painting. Anything that's facing directly where the supposed camera or audience is, I'm gonna paint this cool blue And then when I'm done, I'll deselect my selection. Okay, now it's looking a bit haphazard at the moment, so I wanna balance it. I'm gonna bring down the blue. I'm gonna bring down, uh, I'll bring up the backlight, but I'm gonna flick through my settings and see if I can find a better lighting setting. Cause I don't love the one that I had. I'll see what it looks like with just that. Um, no, I don't like that. I'll go through again. That one's not bad. Is that what I had? That's hue. No, I don't want that. Oh, what's this? No, it looks terrible. What's wrong with me? Uh, I guess I'll just go with the one that I had, which I think was vivid. No, not vivid light. I don't mind it though if I really bring down the opacity. So as you can see, it's very much an improvisational process. Okay, so I've, I've gone with vivid light, and if I just kind of bring that to a really low opacity. I think that merges them quite well. Okay, so if I hide my lighting, you can see that the difference speaks for itself. Okay, so with it, it's, I mean, it's fairly simple sort of thing. And I'm just for the sake of mucking around, I'm going to see what it looks like to add another layer and add yellow in a different direction. So this is kind of like a 60s portrait, <laughs> but with like Thor the Elder. It's weird. So I'm just, for the sake of experimentation, wanting to add some lighting in this direction. Just to see what it ends up looking like. Like I said, it's very experimenting. Might work, it might not. So I'm going to work with my light settings and see if anything sticks out something I like. Now keeping in mind as I go through the light settings the opacity is on full so if I see something extreme and I say I like it it's because I know I can mess with it. Okay so I actually kind of like the effect that this has this soft light. I think it kind of makes it look like there's something in front of him whether it's a fire or I don't know I kind of like it so I'm going to bring down the opacity I'm going to add a little bit more of that keep that in the image. In fact, I'm going to replace the blue light with this yellow one and delete the layer. I just like it more than the blue light and I don't think they mix very well because they're too, they contrast too much. And I think the uh, purple is a bit weird. So I'm going to go into my purple layer, double click and go color overlay and I'm going to change it to fit better with the background. Let's say a blue. Maybe that's a bit too, uh, let's go red. No, yeah, blue will have to be it. Okay, so I'm changing my back purple light to a back blue light instead and bring down the opacity even more. Bring down the opacity of my yellow. In fact, I'll see if there are other color settings that work well. No, I'll go back to what I had. Soft light, I believe it was. There we go. Bring the opacity down. Okay, so very simply and quickly, I've added like a, a few couple of lighting tricks. I want to add a background texture. So to do so, I'll find my texture folder and I'll, let's see if I can find a texture I like. Blood usually works quite well. So if I'll add a blood 
stamp to the background like this. And then as well as that, I'll add a texture of something more coarse. Let's say this plaster base. So I'll make that bigger. And I'll mess with the color settings till I find something that overlays well. I quite like that. Don't mind that. Actually, I like that. And I'm going to change my rim lighting again. This is all very exper experimental. Where I've changed the color overlay, I'm going to change that to a red because I think that will suit now that I've changed the background. Oh, more of an orange, maybe. Yeah, I actually much, much prefer that. So I'm bringing the opacity up a little bit. Might make it a little closer to red than orange. About there. Alrighty, almost there. I'll just kind of delete here a bit. I think it's a bit too much. Uh, okay, so I'm almost there. I think the background's quite harsh. So I'm going to paint a solid black color and go change the overlay to color and bring it down so that the saturation isn't as strong. And then finally, I'm going to do a single image overlay to add some shading. So I'm going to add a new layer at the very top of everything all together. And I'm going to select a black with uh, a very large brush size. Uh, it's around 800 and low opacity. And I'm going to just kind of go around and paint darker edges around the portrait. And what that does is it kind of frames the focus. Okay, I actually think the colors of the whole thing are a bit too strong at the moment. So I'm going to do the same thing, paint black, go color and bring it down to, let's say around 10%. So you can see the difference just kind of pulls out a little bit of that sickly colorly glow. And if I wanna make changes to the brightness and contrast of the overall image, it's fairly simple. I'm gonna hide these top two layers and I'm gonna grab everything on the stage, right click, duplicate layers, and then right click, uh, right click, merge layers. There we go. So I'm gonna hide everything else that I just copied and duplicated. And I have one flat image here and I can make changes to this image. So I'm gonna duplicate it so I have a, a copy to go back to. I'm gonna go image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. So I want this to pop out a bit more, so I'm going to cheat a bit and just bring up the contrast. Bring up the brightness, bring up the contrast, oh, about there, I quite like that. So that's what it was, that's what it is. I'll bring back my top layers and I'm going to saturate the colour even more. So the difference is, if you look at that, and like I said, this is very improvisational, but this is what I had and this is what it has become. So I've sapped out a bit of the colour. I've made the intensity of the contrast even more so. In fact, I might even do that a little bit more. Bring up the contrast. There we go. I'm actually quite liking that. And uh, then I have my dark overlay to make sure that everything feels quite framed. Alrighty. And so I'm actually really happy with how that's done. And then the final finishing touch that we do is we add a new layer on the top of all of that zoom in somewhere, let's say down here, get a brush, bring it down to like three pixels, get my white and add, oops, gotta make sure the opacity is up, add my little signature, and I'll bring that down. There you go, just so people know it was you. Go full screen again, drag that over in the corner, and we are completely finished. I hope you uh, were able to learn a bit from this tutorial series on painting in Photoshop. I've really enjoyed uh, sharing it and I, I hope that you can find things that you can use. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.